Uh, low traders, Mark here from the day trading room. Uh, time is half past nine in the morning on a Sunday, uh, London time, 8th of May. And what a week it was. <laughs> well, where to start? Uh, there's only one place to start really, and that is to have a look at the post I put on my blog. Um, or if you don't want to look, then I'll just tell you, I put a big post saying, please, please, please guys, manage your risk. If you're choosing to trade this, uh, oil move and the silver move um, you must have you must have adequate risk management it was it is crazy out there and as you'll see in a minute I'm going to talk through some of the trades um, even at one point I was stepping away I was stepping back because I couldn't get a good read on it and it was so volatile the risk was so high um, that even on on the smallest size uh, you know you were still having to use I was using 50 cent stops at one point so um yeah just just please manage your risk um you know I, I really enjoy getting your emails which is fantastic but i i, I don't like reading them when i see uh stories of um of, of serious account damage so right after let's get that out of the way first um oh one thing i would want to mention actually i did post on the blog on uh uh, Thursday I believe it was I'm on the laptop again by the way so the screens are slightly different to normal um, the 1st of May uh, 2nd of May actually yeah, the first day of the month that the ticks had gone to the lowest ever reading uh, that they had been for since the 13th of March I think I can't remember what I put now 11.04 um, so I did put you know is this the sell in May go away scenario who knows I'm not a swing trader but uh, I definitely had, uh, had that uh, written down going into the in the next few days on the Dow being aware that beginning of May potential change in money shift and uh, obviously the lowest tick readings uh, is a bit of a bit of a sign so the Dow has rolled over I'm not going to discuss my Dow trades I'm not going to waste time on the videos I think oils are what everyone wants to hear about and I made some great oil trades and some awful oil, tra oil trades so uh, we'll go through that the only Dow trade that I was uh, is worth mentioning is this this was great um, and this is really the, the ticks again giving you the clue uh you know small gap down we, we're hovering below the lows here uh, but look at the ticks you know the ticks here are pretty much telling you that this isn't 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 going to die a death um lots of solid tick readings here on push-ups very mixed volume nothing special then as we drove down here yes okay we got a low tick reading but not by much not by much at all um which in itself is, is is you know useful info but more useful info to me which uh gave me the trigger to take this this trade as i say it's anyone i'm going to only trade i'm going to go through uh in this video there were others but i think i think this is the best Dow trade <coughs> excuse me of the week for me uh with the fact that ticks are now making new highs we're only just coming off the lows and we're getting new highs in ticks uh you know that's telling you something that you've got to pay attention to that sort of thing plus the fact that um, there's an obvious level of risk there, a little maybe a bit large, perhaps dial down your risk to suit, so contract size to suit. Uh, but you know, when I see that sort of thing, I just don't see the conviction to the downside. Um, ticks are not confirming. Look at the difference between there and here. You know, ticks, even though they're making highs, obviously, they were low and were getting steady, good, aggressive new lows in ticks as the market drove down. The pullback in ticks here and then the revisits to the lows. Pull back in ticks here, new highs in ticks, yes, but relative to the low, not too high, then a drive lower. This is a different scenario. We got a complete new high in ticks, a breakout uh, when the ticks weren't even going to new lows. I know there is a new low, you know, actually, if you look counting it, but when I'm talking new lows, I'm talking about that sort of bang, 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 rather than a flat and just a small poke through. Um, so you know, I, I was I was happy to take that long, um, and that was a great trade for me. Scaled out as we just approached into highs, um, and wanted to hold some. Really wanted to hold some. Uh, I was looking for that gap fill. Uh, we didn't get it, but I was aware enough that you know when we put a double top in here, uh, you know, we started to just bring the bring a trailer below above that. Sorry, below that uh, that swing low. That looked like the first pullback and drive. I thought at that point, okay, I'm going to get this. It's going to be great. Um, but it didn't work out. But anyway, pleased to have, pleased to have trailed that. And, uh, you know, one, two, three scales. Great trade. But let's talk about the uh, the market of the week. 
Um, apart from silver, of course, if you're watching silver, that's just as active. Um, and you know, I have to say that the volatility was there. The moves were definitely there. Um, I didn't capitalize on it perhaps as much as I could. I felt that the, the volatility was so great, the risk was so great, that actually the risk reward ratio was very similar to a normal type of move. And in fact, I felt I had a slightly less of an edge uh, because the tape was moving so quickly, it's, it was hard to read the key levels. It was hard to read buyers and sellers at one level because you were getting, uh, it was almost as if 10, 10 ticks was equal to you know, one level as we had before. So it, was, it, was, it took a while to get into the feel of it. It took a while to get into the feel of it. So anyway, let's have a talk about some of the trades. Thursday, we were sitting in this range here. It was quite a large range. I wasn't that interested. I was more interested in the Dow at the time. Um, uh, but I was interested if we'd start to poke below lows. And this was okay. It was a nice little scalp on this. Uh, there's your 105 level. Um, you know, if I'm seeing that, a bit of a tape read again, a bit of volume coming in. Just pop through that 105, not by much. The arm long, and we pop back up. And because the volatility was reasonable there, you know, that was a nice, you know, that was a nice little trade. An all in, all out job, uh, especially when I'm fading, things like that. Um, and then I'm still, still looking for longs. I've still got longs on my mind. We just rolled over here. And I don't know why I traded it in this direction, if I'm honest. I just felt that this perhaps here was the first pullback. You can't see it very clearly on a one minute. Uh, I should have showed you on a 100 tick. But that perhaps was the first pullback there, which I missed at the 104.50. Uh, and then we plowed through, plowed through the 104. So I'm looking to buy. I'm looking, I'm sitting on the long side of this thinking, you know, this is just a flush. We're going to get a pop, pop back up. And I got a lovely buy that 103.64. Uh, really pleased with that. And just held for that pop at 104.04. Uh, you know, the high, it wasn't even far off the high. So, you know, I can feel feel pleased with that 104.10. Um, looking, it was 40 ticks. My size was dialed right down on that because the volatility had picked right up here. And I thought, ooh. This isn't this isn't normal. This is unusual. So really, really low size, um, but pl so pleased to get forty ticks out of it. But 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 at that point, I said to myself, "You've misread this." As it as it rolled over here and plowed through that, and we were getting you know that's a hundred tick moving in five minutes. That's two hundred ticks in sort of ten or fifteen minutes. At that point, I was thinking, "Hang on, you've misread this." Now I'm thinking back to the Egypt news or to the upside where we just get those blow off tops and you have to wait for that exhaustion rather than uh, trying to chase it. So, you know, at that point I sat back. I sat back because I wasn't sure what was going on and I couldn't read the tape adequately. I didn't feel like I had uh, the edge that I normally do um, because I got on the wrong side of this because I misread that. Okay, I got a great entry and a great exit. Um, but it was it was wrong in the scheme of things. The, the correct trade was to wait for that. Consider that as the first pullback. Take the short above 104, and you know rewarded very nicely for that. Um, so I, I I stayed out of it, and I remember was just chatting to uh, either the trader in the office, and was saying, "This is this is wild. This is really wild. This is a different ball game." Um, you know you did. And we were saying actually while it was around here, you know, I'm going to be an I'd, I'd be a love to be a buyer at 100, thinking there's no there's no way it's going to get there. But you know what, anything can happen. So I'm still thinking, okay, I'm still picturing my mind. You know, if it, if we get that capitulation through 100, that's a big excursion uh, from the net change. So you know, I stayed out of all this. I just not because I didn't want to trade it. I really did want to trade it. I really wanted to get involved in it. But I just I was watching the tape and I just couldn't I could not get a feel for it, and it you know it was the volatility it was it was everything mixed up it was the fact that I got on the wrong end wrong end of this it was the volatility it was the the you know it was just a combination of things I just struggled to 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 get in tune rather than just have a stab at it um, with a fifty cent stop which is what you, you know you have to be using in this case I mean look this is a one dollar range. Uh, you, you almost have to be using that sort of thing, and that's what I was using later on. We'll talk about those in a minute. So I didn't get involved in that, and, and I'm disappointed that I couldn't, I couldn't get in tune with it. But you know, at the same time, 
pleased that I didn't just 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 go wild. And you'll see it later on um, some of the things I did do, which were really really bad. So anyway, we've got the drive down, coming towards the seven thirty, uh, which is the, the close. First pop under one hundred. I am all over that. I'm all over that. Um, you know, it was a great take read. We just watched it drive lower. It, it teased a couple of times. We were watching, I think that it went to the you know, 106. It just kept teasing, teasing. I'm like, I'm not, I will not chase this at all. This market is coming to me. You know, I want low 80s at the minimum, at the minimum. Uh, market drove lower. It it, it was that, it, it, that played out as expected. That was, that was actually the highest probability trade out of the whole few days in my opinion and because the risk was limited the bottom was in at that 68 it started to lift back up uh, there was an obvious target for an overshoot of the 100 and you know it was a fantastic uh, 30 or so tick trade which uh, I think the, the probability of that popping back up off that first break was was great and the second time we visited I'm I, I'm taking the long again but this time if we're revisiting a really key level and I'm expecting it uh, to pop back up, if we do a second visit, the second visit should bring in huge buyers and we should be rocketing right up. You know, it should be a really aggressive, strong move on the second push. If it's genuine and it looked genuine at the time, double bottom, slight lower reading, loads of buyers under there, bang, you're expecting that to absolutely explode, trap all the shorts, and it, I know, I really thought that was going to be a really, really good trade. The risk again quantified, we just put in the new low, as soon as it starts to lift back up, stops below that low, it was quite wide because of the, you know, because of the uh, volatility at the time. We popped back up, um, then we just started to stall. I thought, okay, I'll, I'll give this a little bit of room. I've got a lot in, a lot of uh, profit cushion here in the bag. Uh, I will give it a little bit of room because I thought, okay, we might just a little pause and then blow, blow to the top. We didn't get it. I came out, but it never, nevertheless, a good trade, a good trade. And then I started to get a little bit uh, worried about doing it for the third time. You know, we're revisiting now, and we're closing under the hundred. Now that's pretty pretty significant you know I, I i don't i don't like that at all i'm i'm not interested in that i don't want to short it because it's at a, underneath a really key level and i don't want to buy it so i said you know what i'm going to stick an order in at 99.07 and hoping that we might get a low volume spike as we did uh, as we have done it in the past few months we just get uh, guys hitting that bid and because the bid's so light it, it just rocks down um and so i stepped away I stepped away and uh, I got filled uh, when I came back at 99.07 <laughs> and I was using a 50, 50 cent stop on this and I got stopped. I just got stopped. Um, I was I was sort of in two minds that I would hold this. I thought this was, this was too much in a way um, and I was thinking, okay, if I get a good cushion, I will hold this overnight with a stop below whatever the low was, expecting something like a 102. You know, that's what I had in my mind. I thought, okay, there's three dollars in this, um, and but I took a stop. You know, I had to I had to have that risk in there, and that wasn't far off the low of that cluster. Really, actually, that arrow should be there. A bit misleading, but it, a 50 cent stop. So, um, as I say, 57. It was uh, 9907 was my order. So. Yeah, I wasn't wasn't too happy about that. You know, I felt as if I'd given away um, a really good read earlier, um, just based on the fact that I thought it was low. But anyway, I carried on watching it, and we just we just put this bottom in now. This is the first time for a while that uh, some buyers just started to become a little bit more aggressive. Uh, the volume's still low because it's after hours. I'm still looking, watching. Anyway, I decided to take another buy here at, at 99. As we as we broke through the 99 and it held, I took a buy around that sort of level it's an 07 or 010 something like that a 10 it was uh, it wasn't wasn't on the low 99s it was a mid to high 99s but again um just giving myself a 50 cent stop thinking okay if that's genuine it shouldn't come back into here and i held on to that i put my stop in and went away and did a few other bits and pieces um and the, I was rewarded with this one. This uh, eventually, just before midnight, I think it was, actually, no, it was 11 o'clock, uh, we got the 100. I'd already had my order resting in. 
um, and uh, we popped up and, and got the fill. So that was a nice hundred tick trade. So I'm pleased with that. Um, got back uh, what I lost on there, and it was different. This is a different setup, really. This is this, these two things really were nothing like these sort of tape reading setups. This is all tape. This is all based on momentum flushes. Um, this is sort of something I, I don't do very often, but I felt as if um, you know there was a, a revisit of 100 was on the cards, and that's what I was playing for here. And I took a stop. Probably in hindsight, the stop was a little bit tight um, because I was looking for that longer move. But anyway, that's that. That's what happened. I took the stop on that, but then rewarded finally uh, with that. Uh, let's go on to Friday. It's going to be a longer video this time, uh, guys. I hope you're okay with that. Anyway. Eight o'clock in the morning, I am up and I'm watching this roll down. I'm half asleep, thinking I'm not going to get involved in this yet. I, I don't, I don't have a feel for it. You know, hundred was my level. If we'd have driven up from a hundred and pulled back to the hundred, something like that, I'd have been pleased. Now we're rolling over to brand new lows. We know we've taken out the yesterday thing. We're ninety fives. This is crazy. I'm thinking, you know, what is what is going on? It, I, I thought it was a buy at ninety nine. Uh, you know, I got away with it. I, I, I still think it's a buy for a pullback to at least 102. I, I'm still thinking that at the time. So I'm, I'm staying away from shorts. I'm staying away from them. But I'm trading it a little bit differently to as I would if I was trading it short term. Short term, I'd be looking for those flushes to get onto to buy for the pop. Now I'm waiting to see strength uh, to buy. And normally that would not that would be a losing... Um, a losing strategy on a, on a on a sort of quick market you know you're trying to wait for the strength you're already late into the move and normally I'd be scaling out there but in this case i wanted to wait until the, the balance had shifted back round. so this time i bought a, a 96 as the 96 was holding here you see we popped up held i thought okay i'll give it a shot i started to drew this trend line in um Again, 50 cent risk, it wasn't really enough, if I'm honest, but okay. <laughs> and it took a dollar out of that. So I'm starting to think, okay, this is a 50 cent risk, one dollar reward type thing. By the way, one, the lowest possible amount uh, tradable, um, no size at all, with that sort of risk and the trades on offer. You know, uh, there's no way I'm going to be trading a five lot, you know, I'm just right, scaling right back, scaling right back. And this is what I put here. I actually rebought again as we visited the 96. We held. I thought, you know, I'll have another nibble here. Uh, okay, I've, I've made you know, a nice 100 tick trade there. I can afford to give back 50 and still be uh, quite nicely. And this was uh, this was a fantastic trade. But, you know, the dilemma of trading, you know, without being able to scale. This is why I put the box here. Um, as it pushed back up to 97, it was pausing and pulling back. And I would have been scaling. There's no doubt about it. I no doubt I would have been scaling on that because it's a good level we'd pull back a bit you know a double a double top for a rollover was potentially on the cards and I was just the angle you know the, the forces inside me going oh take it out take I thought no don't take it out you know don't take it out pull your stop up a bit you know put a stop up so that you've got 30 cents in the bag you had a good one there and then just run it because I still think it's got more to go and again here i thought oh you know we've pushed up i've missed the exit pulled back and i just said you know, no 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 come on just leave it on just leave it on you know this is an opportunity to make a a little bit more and feel a little bit better about getting longer targets uh and you know i got i got it in the end i got my two dollars uh 98 so uh, it did actually go higher it did actually go higher but at that point i was just you know pleased to take it out so good trades really good trades in the morning really pleased with that um unfortunately it didn't uh, continue throughout the day. I was watching it and we got the data came out, the non-farm payrolls. We spiked up very quickly to 100, should I say. I took a quick short and scalped it out as we pushed back down. Um, this isn't even here. It was more like 30 cents to be honest. I was so quick in and out. I didn't hang about because I knew that I was against the, the, the move and I thought potentially, okay, this is the move that we're getting up to back up to the 102 am i are we are going to get it now so it was a quick scalp and um it got, got away with that one and this is where it went all starts to go a little bit wrong to be honest um so that was okay you know not as not as good as the earlier trades um i just I look in the chart now the one minute chart in hindsight it does look very clear it does look very, that's the way of trading you know we've got this triangle here uh push up the drive higher um 
key level here the 101 I just didn't I you know it, once it hit the this was I took a short here why did I take a short here but I thought that that high there was just an exhaustion through a good volume started to pause a bit there's the short and uh, I ended up taking a stop I ended up taking a 50 cent stop on that I was out at a 1110 um uh, just a bad trend just a bad read i just i just a bad read you know tape i thought we'd ex exploded high enough i thought it was just a little fake pop thought we get the pull back to the hundred that was the premise uh, but it didn't work out it didn't work out so I took a stop on that uh <laughs> finally hit the 102 that i was thinking we'd hit earlier in the day uh if only it was a swing trader <laughs> I didn't want to short it. I felt I was out of tune again. Uh, the volatility was very high. I did, however, short it here. Again, took a stop, unfortunately. Uh, saw this as a good level, 101. As we broke, we pushed back up. Thought that was the final push before the drive lower to the 100. Thought that was a high probability trade, to be honest. Uh, again, it was a little bit of a triangle. A little bit of a triangle. We'd already hit targets. We're coming down. Uh, this was another good level. I just would have expected it to do that. Uh, it didn't pop me up, and yep, yeah, you guessed it. Uh, took a stop on that. So two pretty savage stops, giving back a dollar. Um, so it wiped out that gain, and it wiped out a portion of that gain. So the day wasn't that great. The day wasn't that great. Uh, you know, took fortunately, you know, the three dollar. A total move there we you know made up for the day really but disappointing that it's just a bit of a misread and then i left it then i just thought you know i'm just not even good don't want to get involved in it now i don't feel in tune with it i'm uh, disappointed for taking those those stops um and you know i'm not going to let it i'm not going to let it affect the bottom line i'm not going to let it affect the bottom line um it's quick the tape the tape was so quick you know it was it was a volatile levels were holding them breaking and you know spotting institutional players was 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 difficult it was difficult so in hindsight better to have gone back to the chart look at the levels as i was doing earlier earlier in the day i was trading much more off the chart because the tape was a lot thinner um just looking at the levels looking at the where we where we expect to go and you know i couldn't have asked for more I couldn't have asked for more but in the afternoon um yeah tried to read the tape which uh, which wasn't which wasn't the same sort of rhythm uh, as it as it normally is, and it and it just just couldn't get a feel for it. So, uh, but hey, you know, pleased pleased with most of the trades. The main thing is that you know manage the risk. The main thing is manage the risk. You know, I'll take two fifty cent stops uh, if I need to, rather than doing that. You know, you could I could have been it could have been it could have been much much worse. It could have been much much worse. Um, Profitable day, nicely profitable day, relative to the range of the day. Uh, you know, not, not as much as I'd liked. But uh, anyway, there, there we go, guys. There's, 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 uh, there's my, those are my trades for those uh, volatile days. Uh, not perfect. Trading never is. Trading never is. Uh, you, you know, you get them wrong. I'll get them wrong. You'll get them wrong. The best trader in the world is going to get them wrong. That's why you have to imagine your risk. You know rip your head off just think if you you were thinking this was going to go to the moon you end up buying here uh not taking it out and you you know you're long from 101 and now it's down at 97 50 98 you know that's a that's an awful awful lot of risk to be taking um you know the guys out there are doing that unfortunately um and not adjusting the position size to suit not accepting the new level of risk um but for me it's just a little bit much just a little bit much um and didn't get in tune with it quickly i'm going to um if we volatility is on Monday, going to really try and get in tune with the tape because uh, uh, it sort of makes you realise actually how how important tape reading is. You know, when you don't you don't get in tune with it, you don't get a feel for it, the tape, and you're trading off the chart. You actually, yeah, you know, the risk is a lot greater. You know, I sort of take it for granted a little bit the tape reading aspect that you know, during normal days uh, my risk is is quite uh, is quite low. You know, I see a tape tape bit of uh, tape uh, tape pattern should I say and I'm in on it and if it doesn't work I'm, I'm pretty much uh, straight out and, uh, and that and that works you know that works you can you know it works the the uh, risk reward ratio works for you and uh, the odds work for you so anyway good trading guys have a great weekend just uh, relax and uh, take a rest hope you did okay last week I hope don't forget number one thing is we're risk managers 
Um, I repeat myself a lot about it. I really do, but I, I do firmly believe that you know we are here to manage risk. That is that is the number one thing. You're just looking for low risk, high probability setups. That's all we're looking for. And you know what? As I said in the blog post, if the volatility is too great, too much for you, there is no shame in stepping back. There's no shame in turning off the computer and going. Uh, on the beach if you live on the beach or going for a walk in the countryside whatever wherever you live whatever you do whatever you enjoy doing there is no shame there is no shame because um we, we're not here to be heroes we're not here to look good and say how well we're doing and oh yeah we rode the oil market when it was you know that's not what it's about uh, you know there's guys out there who try and do that and inevitably they're in it for the wrong reasons if you're in here to make money you're in here looking for the best high probability low risk setups and they most of the time they're the most unsexy setups out there you know sometimes they look great you know you catch the exhaustion moves but most of the time they're pretty dull stuff you know you're buying a pullback we're looking for the leg up um but you know who cares if it's low if it's low risk high probability if it's putting money in the bank um then you know i'm here to make money i mean i enjoy the trading but i'm here to make money they say i'm here to make my living um i'm not here to be superstar trader getting every swing on on the most volatile instrument you know i enjoy watching it don't get me wrong when i wasn't in tune with it and i decided not to trade it i was watching it i was watching the tape watching the move i i enjoyed uh, actually watching it and watching silver as well which was very volatile um but i know that I've, i'm a risk manager i've just got to manage my risk and and that's all we can do that's all we can do guys right i've rambled on enough <laughs> apologies i do take the risk thing seriously i really hope you will too um, send me your emails, let me know how you got on. Uh, I'll be really interested to know some of the trades you guys took. Um, maybe we can do um, uh, another webinar thing. I don't think I'm going to do a presentation again, as, or not presentation, I don't think I'm going to do a talk again as such. I think uh, if we do it, 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 I'd like to include everybody talking about perhaps the week, uh, trades, things you've done, and, and we can make it really interactive experience. So uh, if you're keen on that, then we'll uh, we'll do that when the market uh, uh, calms down a little bit uh, but yeah some of your trades some of what you got up to really interested to hear you as always good trading guys manage your risk i'll be back with another video later in the week take care